Sorry, everybody. We just had some technical difficulties. We're getting the solve right now, and we'll get the meeting underway in a minute. New phone. My brain. All, everything is different about a new phone. Nay. Hello. Hello. Oh, how are you? Hi. Oh, I'm still GRCC. I should change that. Is that Jerry up there in That's the top? Jerry. Hi, Jerry. Uh -huh. Mr. Mayor. So are you running the meeting? Um, I'm in Tennessee, so I can view, but I can't vote. I see. Okay. And you could discuss. What's that? You can discuss. That's all. Well, that's a lot. Not really. I don't have much to say. <laughs> Oops. Oh, what happened? I'm sorry. I missed that bit. Who's running the meeting tonight? I am. Okay. Just give me 30 more seconds. Let me You're bring fine. up my, uh, my agenda and stuff. Hmm. We had any discussion about the um, Cedar Blitz yet? Or the bike? Okay, Madam Mayor, pretend I don't see anybody else in the waiting room and I've got my agenda and stuff ready to go. Whenever you're ready. All right, I will, do we have a quorum? We have Renee, we have... Jerry. We have, well, Jerry, Jerry doesn't count, right? Okay. So Rose, Lisa, and I are in the chamber. Lisa just stepped okay. out real quick. She'll be right back. Okay. Uh, Should Jerry we wait Gross. for Lisa for just a minute? Yes, please. And uh, Jerry Gross will be unable to attend he was required by his other duties as a code enforcer to attend a separate meeting tonight. Sure. I was just trying to make sure I'm, I'm the screen for the council chambers is small and I, it looked like there was one person, but I guess there's two Rose is little. So she is hard to see behind the computer screen. Right in front of the red flannel. So I was trying to make sure that we had a quorum. signature on your petition I have Clint's background up so he had office hours earlier. Lisa has returned, so I think we're ready in the chamber when you are. All right, then I am going to call the meeting of the City Council of Cedar Springs to order at 716 for Thursday, April 15th. And if everyone could rise and say the pledge. Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, 
indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. With that, I'm going to call the roll. Ms. Atchison. Here. Uh, Mr. Gross is absent. Ms. Nixon. Here. Ms. Powell. Here. Ms. Race. Here. And uh, Mayor Hall, I think you can say you're present. Here. At this time, I would entertain a motion to excuse Councillor Gross. I would make a motion to excuse Councillor Gross. Support. All those in favor, say aye. 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 All those opposed, say no. Motion carries. We wish Councillor Gross well while he works at his other job this evening. At this time, we will move on to public comments. The council welcomes, let me just shift a little bit here to get to my agenda better on a separate screen. Uh, the council welcomes and encourages the public to speak during the public comment and public hearing portions of the agenda. However, council policy is to hear the public comment, not to act on the public comment at this time. Concerns brought before the council during the public comment portion of the agenda will be referred to the city manager for action. If after communicating with the city manager, no resolution is reached, the concerns will be elevated to the mayor and then eventually to the full council for action. Those citizens wishing to speak on agenda or non-agenda items will be allowed a maximum of four minutes each to address their concerns. This is the only time during the council meeting that citizens are allowed to address the council. If you would like a response, please state your name and address for the record. Moving on, we do not have any public hearings tonight, is that correct? Ms. Conley, I do believe we have one public comment in the council room. Oh, okay. I'm sorry, I should have waited for public comment after I read that, that would be helpful. Public comment. Um, I would like to, um, I would like to have sort of a, uh, a weekend or a day where we could do a sort of cleanup for the creek and the town. And I mean, really, I think it would just be nice because there's a lot of junk that just goes into the creek. And well, we got to pick it up sometime. Why don't we just make a day of it? So I was thinking we could make that a community thing that we could all do and I'll take a part in. And my name is Kyla Nixon, and I live at 305 Fourth Street. Well, 49319. I mean, really. Thank you, Ms. Nixon. We May appreciate I, your public comment. May I be allowed to add to? Certainly, Ms. Nixon. Okay. So Kyla is trying to organize with her Girl Scout troop this public cleanup day. And at some point in the future, would like a meeting with the city manager to discuss either a community event application or what other permits or action she might need to take to go forward. I would love to refer that to the city manager. I would also recommend that she look at Earth Day. That's coming up that we often do a city cleanup on Earth Day. And I'm sure the Girl Scout troop would be more than welcome to participate in that, but we can have her speak to the city manager. We, we can't hear her. She's away from the microphone. Well, I just hope it's not on a weekday because we all have school or something. I think, <laughs> I think Earth Day, it's usually on a Saturday. Isn't it coming up on the 20th? I believe it's the 22nd this year. 22nd this year. I have a feeling that your mother would work out a good time for you. 
I think we could probably, and I really do appreciate that. And I appreciate that your school is important to you and that you would not want to miss that to be able to help clean up the city. So I appreciate you being a good scholar and I appreciate you also caring about your community. Plus, yes, we're in the middle of a good read aloud and I do not want to miss a chapter. I can see that. Would you like to do a final shout out for the book before we move on? Sure, it's The War That Saved My Life and I cannot remember the name of the author. The author. Okay. Well, thank you. I'm glad it's a wonderful book. We love to hear about wonderful books. So is there any other public comment? Do we have anyone on Zoom for public comment? Uh, I believe we have uh, Sam Randall. Would Mr. Randall like to make a public comment? Um, we have Marty, I apologize, Marzinski. Mar uh, would Marty like to make a public comment? Um, hi, everybody. Uh, yeah, I'm just, I'm here representing uh, the bike race that uh, we want to put on on May 22nd at Cedar Springs Brewery. Um, so if there's any questions for me, feel free to shout out. We're here. Yep, we generally do ask questions of people uh, during that agenda item. Okay. Yeah, and I was going to say, you're on the agenda. Okay, great. Okay. Thank you. Anybody uh, else? We have uh, Ashley. Would Ashley like to make a public comment? No, thank you. And we have Emily Wilson. Would Emily Wilson like to make a public comment? Yeah, fuck you, you bald-headed ape. Fucking cunt. Oh, my God. Gosh, I don't know if any of us here are really bald. So that's interesting. Okay, moving on. Any other public comments? No one else in the chamber? Sorry, it just took me a second to remove him. I apologize for that. It's okay. We do not have anybody else in the chamber. All right. It's a, I'm a high school teacher. I've heard it all. <laughs> but I'm not bald, not even a little. All right, moving on to the, um, there no, so no public hearings, correct? Moving right. on to the adoption of the agenda. Do I have a motion to adopt the agenda? I'd like to make a motion. Oops, go ahead, Lori. Go ahead. I'd like to make a motion to adopt the agenda as written. I would second that. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, say no. Moving on to the consent agenda. The council members may request that any or all items be removed from the consent agenda. A motion is then in order to adopt all items not removed from the consent agenda. Requesting the removal of an item from the consent agenda is a prerogative afforded each council member and does not require the support of other council members. So at this time, is there a motion to approve the consent agenda? I would like to pull out items E and G for further discussion. Okay. Would you like them put in a specific place on the agenda further down? Um, I think they could still be under action items. Uh, I just need a little further understanding of them. Sure. Did you get that, Madam Clerk? Yes, thank you. Then, and let me make a note as we go. So it looks like that would be action items C and D. Correct. That's okay. what I have. All right. Moving on then. Any, any other changes for the consent agenda? Then I would take a motion to approve the remainder of the consent agenda minus items E and G. I would make that motion. I'll support it. 
And since there's money involved, I will do a roll call. Ms. Atchison. Yes. Uh, Ms. Nixon. Yes. Ms. Powell. Yes. Ms. Race. Yes. And Mayor Hall has to abstain and uh, Councillor Conley votes yes. So moving on to the action items. I'm sorry, Motion. Madam, Madam Mayor Pro Tem, why did the uh, mayor have to abstain on that vote? Because he's in Tennessee. I don't believe that's a problem. He just said that he can't vote on anything if he's not in the city limits of Cedar Springs. Um, that's not my understanding of what the, uh, the current status of the law is. Uh, my understanding is that uh, you are able to participate electronically, both under the Kent County Emergency Order and okay. also the state of Michigan law. I'm, he, I'm going he, off what the mayor just told me. Okay. I vote yes. Okay. <laughs> then motion carries. <laughs> six, six to zero. And would do you want to um, run the meeting, Mr. Mayor? Would you like me to continue to do that? No, that's fine. Continue on. I do not have an agenda in front of me. Okay, but then I will. I will ask you to vote on each item. So then, moving on to action items, a motion to approve the Cedar Springs Social Distance and Res uh, Social District and Resolutions Twenty One. I don't have numbers on them. Would you like those, Ms. Conley? I would love those. So it's going to be 2021-08, 09, and 10. Okay, so 2021-08, uh, 09, and 010, and the participation of the CS Brewing Company and the Red Bird Bistro. Do we have anything to add to that at this time, Mr. Manager, before we take a motion? Uh, only that we did contact the other two establishments in town that serve alcohol, both declined to participate, but they could be added in later on if they change their minds. Okay. Any discussion? Any questions? Then at this time, I'll entertain a motion. I would make a motion to approve of the Cedar Springs Social District and resolutions 21-08, 21-09, and 21-10, and the participation of the CS Brewing Company and the Redbird Bistro. Is there Our a second? Second. Then all in favor, this one doesn't involve money, so all in favor signify by saying aye. Can we have a discussion? Uh, oh, we can, I'm sorry, yes. Would you, <laughs> would you like to have a discussion? Any discussion? Yeah. Yes, I would. Um, we've been working on this uh, social district resolution for quite some time. It's evolved quite nicely, I thought, and I hope it's a success. And um, the one of the things that I believe is in the resolution is that there will be a separate area for those folks that are drinking alcohol. And I think that was quite important to quite a few of us. So. In that respect, I support this motion. Okay, any other discussion? Uh, I, I would just point out that um, you, this, you know, this resolution, the whole packet is really designed for the Michigan Liquor Control Commission. Uh, what we do here locally uh, during the concerts, during the social district type thing, that's gonna be uh, you know, more of an on the ground decision. So I didn't want to put it into the actual uh, resolutions that we put together. So Ms. Powell is correct. The intent is to separate uh, out who's going to be drinking alcohol where, um, just to keep things safe. Thank you. Okay, other discussion? Anything else to add? All right, then all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed say no. Motion carries six zero. Moving on to action item B, motion to approve the Cedar Blitz Gravel Bicycle Race, May 22nd, 2021, 6 a.m. to 2 p.m. 
as a community event application. And I believe that we have some folks here to speak to this. Would you like yes. to tell us about it? Uh, yeah. So um, May 22nd is the plan um, for the bicycle race. It'll start kind of on the White Pine Trail there. And then we'll carry them out to kind of the gravel roads in Cedar Springs. Um, it'll finish around City Hall, in the American Legion area. Um, there will be um, sort of an event after um, that the Cedar Springs Brewing Company is um, helping with as well for kind of a, a fun community event too. Um, and then uh, we are working to, or we just submitted all our plans and everything. Um, and uh, let's see. Yeah, I'm wondering, is there any other detail that you guys would like to know that, or explain that we uh, presented in the packet? Or? Uh, one thing I'd like to hear is how do you sign up for it? And then how do you uh, volunteer for the race? Oh, okay. Yeah, we have a, uh, we have a website, um, cedarblitz.com, and we have a volunteer tab on there that you can click on so that the volunteers can go in there and give us their information and we'll get back with them. Um, also, there's a registration page along with that, and it goes through Bike Reg. Um, so everything's organized quite well through Bike Reg for the registration. Um, and the, the day of, actually the night before, we're going to have a pre-packet pickup so the racers can pick, pick up their numbers if they want to on Friday night. And then they can also come Saturday morning, pick up their race details, and then, then we'll get the race going. This uh, uh, bike race, this is a private company, right? Yes. And the uh, DDA is donating $1,000. City is donating $1,500. And this money goes toward the uh, police protection and the safety of the citizens in our city and involved in this race. Correct? Correct. Mm -hmm. Right. Yes. Thank you. Any other discussion, questions for our bike, ra bike, bike <laughs> race folks? Say that 10 times fast. <laughs> any, other, any other discussion, any other questions? All right, then I will entertain a motion to approve the Cedar Blitz gravel bike race, May 22nd and uh, 2021 from 6 a.m. to 2 p.m. as a community event. No move. Second. Any other discussion? If, the if, if the race doesn't go off, let's just say for whatever reason, then you don't actually, we don't actually give you the money, right? Correct. I, yeah. We okay. would probably entertain postponing it if it worked for the city, but no, you would not have to pay. Okay, thank you. I have a question. Sure. Um, is this the first time you've had a race or can you tell us a little, just a little history on it? Uh, we tried to do this last year, of course, um, and we had to cancel it. So obviously first year race for this one. Um, me personally, I've been in bike racing for a long time. Um, I've, I've uh, ran a couple of cycle cross races in, uh, in Rockford. So that's kind of my experience behind that. And uh, my son's been involved in racing as well. Sorry, my dog has seen a squirrel. That happens. The Adventures of Zoom. Thank you. Any other questions or discussion? Then the chair will entertain a motion. I would like to make a motion to approve the Cedar Blitz gravel bike race, May 22nd of 2021, 6 a.m. to 2 p.m. community event application. I'll Ms. second. Conley. 
I do believe there was a motion made and seconded. Oh, is there? Okay. Well, Got it. I have Mr. Hall and then Miss Nixon. Okay. Well, I'm glad I liked it twice. Okay. I just wanted to make sure <laughs> so we had nice that. We liked it twice. Then I will do a roll call since the city is going to spend some money to support this. Miss Atchison. Yes. Uh, Miss Nixon. Yes. Ms. Powell. Yes. Ms. Race. Yes. Mayor Hall. Yes. And Mayor Pro Tem Conley votes yes. Looking forward to having a bike race. Yeah, we're looking forward to it too. Thanks. Yeah, thank you. Good luck. Thank you. And thank you. you're welcome to not stay for the rest of the Zoom meeting if you don't want to. You're welcome to stay, but you also don't feel that it's rude if you leave. Okay. Okay. Appreciate that. All right. Thank you. Moving on to action item, what is now action item C, which was pulled from the consent agenda? Yes, so um, both of these, the, the request to defer the installation of sidewalks to a future date, which is, I'm not necessarily opposed to, um, but I understand that both of these are in existing structures. Is, is that correct? That is not correct. Oh. Um, so Jade Farms will be at the northeast corner of 16 Mile White Creek Avenue. Uh, that is an empty okay. field at this point. So that would be a oh. new building. Okay. Um, and the second one, uh, Sweet Chin Music LLC, uh, that's going to be the strip mall where the Big B Coffee currently exists. Okay. Um, so that one is an existing building. Correct. And so that's uh, that's part of the difficulty with that one is what we're basically saying is, hey, you, you're going to rent a space in the strip mall, uh, but we're going to require you to install sidewalks for the full strip mall when you're not the owner of the strip mall. Um, and then Jade Farms is going to be out in the middle of nowhere where no sidewalks are even remotely close to it. And it's unlikely to. In the industrial zone, right? Yeah, so I think we probably as a city need to take a, uh, a different stance, maybe at how we do sidewalks, which is one of the items we're going to talk about here in a minute. Um, but, you know, I, I think the city has been very liberal with uh, saving these companies money and not requiring that they spend tens of thousands of dollars installing the sidewalks uh, when maybe they don't make sense right now. Um, but we have been, at the very least, extracting their promise to install them at a future date. Now, uh, I suspect at a future date they will complain at that time, too. Um, but uh, I don't anticipate that at least Jade Farms will ever have any use for sidewalks. Um, now, the strip mall on the west side of White Creek Avenue, uh, maybe at a future date that would be very useful. Uh, especially when you've got a new hotel there and you've got hotel guests who might want to walk down to the restaurants uh, closer to 17 Mile Road. Now, uh, just to clarify, we would be requiring that from the owner of the property, correct? Like we can't require a renter to do specific land improvements. Well, so it's a little complicated. So uh, the... Uh, the marijuana business that's going in there are the ones who are asking for a special land use. Uh, part of the special land use is a requirement that there be sidewalks installed. Well, so we have the authority to approve or not approve the special land use on the marijuana business. Now, what we could very well easily do is say, well, we're not going to allow your marijuana business unless you install sidewalks. So they would then have to work that out with the property owner. And if they don't want to, that's fine. We don't need that business here. Uh, but that's kind of a policy decision to make for the council. But when we go forward, let's say there's a future date um, two years from now where it would make sense that we that sidewalk needs to be there to connect it to the hotel. It would be the owner that would be responsible. Am I correct? Correct. And they were originally provided that same waiver, am I correct? I, I would assume so. Um, I, we'd have to go back and take a look at the minutes um, because I think the ability to waive the sidewalk insulation didn't even occur, uh, it wasn't in existence until 2008 or 2009. Okay. Um, 
So, I, and again, I don't know. That might have been a township property that came in under the 425. Yeah, I, I feel like that was before even me. I don't know if Mayor Hall can speak to that at all. Yes, uh, in the past, any time those businesses that were put out there, they were given a waiver at that time for sidewalk. But in the future, if it happened, then they would be required. We okay. also had that happen for the BP station on the corner when the other businesses established there, they were required and they did install new sidewalks. Okay. And Mr. Mayor, do you know if we allow the option where they can um, pay for it in their taxes over a period of time? No, they were required to install. Okay. Because I know we do that for citizens. Only for citizen residents in the community. Okay. Thank you for clarifying that. That's your historical knowledge is exceedingly helpful. Okay. All right. Then yeah. do I have any other questions on that prior Madam to the Pro motion? Madam Pro Stem, Mr. Marty with the fire department. Yes. Um, I believe that Mr. Larson and Trust Technologies uh, several years ago uh, annexed that property. Uh, I don't know how many acres to the city. So that is, even though they have well and sewer on their own, we do have police and fire protection because they are part of the city. Okay, they, so they annex, they annex that property. And that's part of the 425 or it's something different? No, no that is something different. Okay. Hmm. Okay, well, given that clarification, um, I would like to make a motion to approve the Jade Farm sidewalk request to defer the installation of the sidewalks to a future date. And additionally, to approve the Sweet Chin Music LLC's request to defer the installation of sidewalks to a future date. Okay. Uh, 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 Is there a second? I can't. Uh, can we separate those two yes, motions? Yes, please? we can. I would like to amend my motion <laughs> to approve the Jade Farm sidewalk request to defer the installation of sidewalks to a future date. Okay. Is there a second? Uh, can, I'll second that and okay. with discussion. Any dis then any discussion? I can discuss there we're in talking, the industrial. We're talking specifically about the- Jade Farms. Yes. Because they're in the industrial uh, zone, I could see where it, it's not a problem to waive a, the sidewalks. They're not in a business district. Which, which is all right with me, as far yeah. as I'm concerned. They don't really need sidewalks in an industrial zone. And there are no okay. sidewalks on either side to connect to. No, and it's, it's an industrial zone. It's a completely different zone than a business zone, like the highway business zone. Okay, other discussion on this specifically for Jade Farms? That was uh, item E under the consent agenda and has been moved to item C under the action items. Any other, this is a, an individual, nope, no other discussion. All right, then I will do a roll call on this. Ms. Atchison. Yes. Ms. Nixon. Yes. Ms. Powell. Yes. Ms. Race. Yes. Mayor Hall. Yes. Yeah. And Mayor Pro Tem Conley votes yes. The motion passes. So then we will move on to the item. What was item J? G. G. That is now G. item D under action items on the Sweet Chin Music LLC's request to defer the installation of sidewalks to a future date. And do I have a motion on that? So I would make a motion to approve of the Sweet Chin Music LLC's request to defer the installation of sidewalk to a future date. Okay, do I have a second? Second. All right, any discussion? Ms. Powell, I feel like you have something you wanna discuss on this? Yes, I, I, I don't know where these, uh, when we're trying to build a commercial district where people walk from stores to stores we got them walking in the ditches. We got them walking alongside a busy street. 
why we continue to defer these sidewalks. We would have a lot more sidewalks out there if we would stop doing that. And that's my opinion. Okay. So I, I have a follow-up question to what Rose is saying. And um, because <laughs> deferring the sidewalks is essentially we say, you're in the middle of nowhere. It doesn't make sense for you to have a sidewalk that connects to nothing. But at that particular spot, we have Wendy's and then the KFC and W and then the strip mall and they're all together. So the two part question is, is it because they were grandfathered in before we took over? And then the second part of that question is, is it fair or even correct to put this on one business who's going to be a renter in a strip mall and I guess I don't have a good answer to that. So. Well, this is this is where I was asking the mayor about his historical knowledge of this because I feel like maybe in a year or two, as the hotel develops, that we might come back and say to all of these businesses, so that part where we said that this was deferred for a period of time, we've now hit a critical mass. And we would like you to all do this at this point. And at that point, again, um, as we know this from roads and sidewalks, when it's all done at once, it's cheaper. So I that's my vision of this, but I'm not sure I would I would love to hear other people's thoughts on this. I would not that sounds great. Renee. Okay. I would not push a renter to put sidewalks on there's no other sidewalks around there right now and i get that um but it would make no sense for a renter if it was an owner of that strip it would make it'd be a different situation but not for a runner okay anyone else lisa you were on planning commission previously do you have any thoughts on this um well i know that i know that we're going to discuss sidewalks here and maybe we're going to come up with a better um, plan um, because I think initially they're going to have to be started somewhere in order to connect them all. So we have to figure that out. I think this is going to be a good time to start figuring that out because we're getting more businesses and we are going to have more, need more um, sidewalks leading to different things so that our um, residents are not in danger walking. So I think that we have that coming up where we're going to discuss that. Um, just to clarify, and those of you who've been on planning commission and uh, Mayor Hall, who is currently on planning commission, would this be the kind of thing that we might take to planning commission as they um, come up with a, what that blueprint should look like so that we could then tell the business owners so that deferment that we allowed you earlier, a year from now, we're going to ask you to do this. And this is what it's going to look like. Would that be a planning commission um, job recommendation? Um, yes, I mean, it would start with staff. Um, staff would you know, walk the sidewalks that exist and take a look at maps with our understanding of, you know, the traffic flow of pedestrians throughout the community. Um, and then probably take it to the planning commission at that point for their input. Uh, but yeah, this is a big and complex and complicated matter. And uh, God bless the planning commission. They've got plenty of those on their plate right now. They've been doing so much heavy lifting. Yep. So uh, this is not a has to be solved today issue. Um, this is certainly something we'll be wrestling with for the next year or two. Um, and I don't have an easy solution at this point, but uh, I just wanted to get the ball rolling. And that's part of the reason that this is on your discussion items. Absolutely. So what I, what I think I understand then is the issue is not so much with whether we want this renter to pay for sidewalks. The issue is now we have a mass of businesses out there and there are no sidewalks. I think that's really what you're getting at. Yeah. And so I, I, would, I would say that perhaps we could defer for this renter, but we may wanna put it on our calendar in the next couple of years that this is an issue that those business owners and those property owners are going to need to address. That you had a deferment, we had an agreement, 
Your deferment time is coming to a close. Make plans. Thanks. That, so would, be, that would be my understanding, Ms. Nixon. We're kind of getting to that critical tipping point where there's enough businesses that we're going to need to call in that deferment, but we would be giving them some time and some direction from the planning commission about what that needs to look like. Yes. So any other discussion on this? Then we have the motion and it's been seconded. I will do a roll call vote on this. Ms. Atchison. Yes. Uh, Ms. Nixon. Yes. Ms. Powell. Yes. Ms. Race. Yes. Mayor Hall. Did we lose them? He's gone. Hmm. Okay. Well, uh, Mayor Pro Tem County votes yes, and that is a uh, majority. So the motion passes. Is Mayor Hall back? Did we? Oh, maybe not. Okay. So motion passes uh, five to zero. Moving on to, we'll see if he comes back. Moving on to discussion items, I believe. Yeah, moving on to discussion items because there's no other action items. Uh, preliminary budget proposed for 2021-2022 budget. Is there any discussion? We've had a meeting, a specific budget meeting. Any discussion on that? Any questions for uh, Ms. Falcon or any for the city manager or any of the department folks on what's proposed in the budget? Uh, Madam Mayor Pratem, the mayor has just texted me and indicated that his battery has died and that's why he's not able to be on the meeting. Okay. Thank and, you, Mayor Hall, and we will miss you. And, Madam and Mayor, enjoy Tennessee. I hope the weather is lovely. Madam Mayor Pratem, another thing I would say is uh, uh, I see that Kyler Gonzalez has raised their hand, but that this is not a public meeting with public comment time. Uh, we do have a public comment time at the beginning of the meeting, and that's generally when we take public comments. About the budget, we're back to that. Yeah, any questions on the budget? I thought it went really well and I thank you, Darla. You just do a wonderful job for us. And I'm glad that our city appears to be in just this fantastic financial shape. And that has a lot to do with our city manager and our finance manager and all the good people of Cedar Springs. So thank you. And Darla, I said it at the budget meeting, but I'll say it again. And I've been through a lot of these. I've been through them with the library. I've been through them with the school. I've been through, I, I don't know, I think this is my seventh or eighth one with the city. And um, you just put together a very readable budget in a way that is very easily understood by a lay person. And it's one thing to be able to make the numbers all come out correctly. It's another thing to do it in a way that makes it so a lay person can understand them. And I really appreciate that skill and that organization and that structure. Thank you. All right, any other discussion? If not, I will move on. City sidewalks. So our previous conversation, I think leads into this quite nicely. The uh, conduct a sidewalk audit. So Mr. Manager, would you like to talk to us about the conducting the audit? Sure. So um, if we will all recall five years ago when I started, uh, one of the mandates that council gave me was we wanted to work on sidewalks and streets. So unfortunately, sidewalks and streets also happen to be some of the most expensive things that we do. Um, we spent what, 500 plus thousand dollars on sidewalks about two years ago. Um, staff and I are looking at getting another CBDG grant for more sidewalks on the west side of Main Street here in the next year or two. Um, 
But even then, $500,000 was only a drop in the bucket in fixing and extending our sidewalks. So um, it's a very important issue, but it's not a cheap issue. It's, it's just not an easy issue to fix. It does really take a long term and long time effort to get done. So um, I know that there had previously been a sidewalk audit long before I was here. Um, so now I think is an like appropriate time. Two city managers ago, I want to say. Sure. Like maybe um, 15 years. I'm, I'm sure Mr. LaRose has a, a more specific time frame, but whatever it is, it's long out of date. So one of the things I uh, was thinking about is we're expecting to hire two uh, summer help uh, DPW workers. And I think it might be a, a good thing to task those people with doing a sidewalk audit for us uh, so that we could have a very comprehensive uh, list of which sidewalks maybe are in really bad condition uh, and get a good idea of how many feet need to be fixed, where the sidewalks might be dangerous, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Um, figuring out where to extend sidewalks to is a little bit easier. Um, because uh, staff and, of course, council understands just through their knowledge of the city uh, where people need to walk to or want to walk to. Um, so we could help identify where sidewalks maybe need to be extended. Uh, but having that actually written down on paper, I mean, I have a generally good idea of where sidewalks are bad, but knowing exactly how many feet of sidewalk uh, is bad is a different thing. So that's one of the tasks I'd like to undertake this year, this summer specifically, uh, so that we'll have it down on paper. Uh, so that's kind of the sidewalk audit. Um, the next thing becomes a sidewalk CIP, uh, which goes hand in hand, obviously. When, when you have a good idea of how many feet exactly of sidewalk need to be fixed or extended and a reasonable idea of how much that costs, now you can figure out a CIP. How many dollars do you have to have per year over X number of years to solve the issue? Um, I just don't know if it's something we could do straight through the general fund. Uh, as I indicated before, half a million dollars was just a drop in the bucket. But if we could put ten or fifteen thousand dollars towards it every year for ten years, well, maybe that might be worth something. Um, and then a discussion on how we actually pay for sidewalks. So the CDBG grant that we got a year and a half ago was $500,000. Uh, we're hoping to get something similar to that in the next year. Um, but really special assessments, general fund budgeting, and um, a couple of other things, Plainfield Township Ordinance, uh, which I put in front of you guys. And then also we could ask for a, um, a millage. Um, so there are some options, and I guess I would like to hear from council at least at a brief uh, uh, discussion about exactly how we might want to proceed on this issue. Mike, how are, I guess I'm not quite clear on how sidewalks are financed. The, part of it is the property owner, part of it is the city. Is, is that, how much of that is true? Well, that's kind of what it comes down to is what's the council's policy going to be. So okay. we can specially assess uh, sidewalks to property owners. Uh, we could especially assess that at 100% of the cost to the property owner or 5% of the cost of the property owner. But then we have to decide where is that other money going to come from? So if we're only going to specially assess 5% to a property owner, now, 95% of that has to come from somewhere else, probably the general fund. Um, in the past, the mayor could tell you, um, and like I, the mayor and I, our block, we did sidewalks 10 ish years ago for, in front of our houses, and we paid the whole thing. Um, but there has been in the past, depending on where you lived and how much walkability there was in that part of your community a community share where I know there was the mayor could get you more specifics but there was like a 50 50 or a 25 75 where it was 25 from the city 75 from the homeowner uh split on the cost of the sidewalk 
And that would be the idea of like, you would take the city's general fund dollars. And then we had a sign up um, where we would allow people to say they would like to get on the list. And it basically made it so that they paid 75% of the cost of the sidewalk. I don't know if that's a thing we would wanna do going forward. Um, the nice part about the list was you didn't make anyone do it. They basically signed up to do this and the city, you know, even if it's a 10 or 15% share is kind of an incentive for them to do it. And you can get it, we did it as a whole block on our block um, because if you do it as a block, it's cheaper. So I don't know, those are some things to think about. We probably, again, though, first need the overall structure of where do we need sidewalks? Where do sidewalks need to be fixed? Um, I know some of our sidewalks are not wide enough. Like that's uh, under um, ADA accessibility, that that's a piece of it. So that would, I, I don't know if we can have the rest of that discussion before we have the first part of the discussion, but I'm not sure where the rest of council feels about that. Mm. Did, I, did I answer any of your questions, Rose, or did I just give you more? Yes, I do remember that uh, program where we had the 50-50 uh, split, I believe it was, and uh, we got a lot of good response from that, but maybe we ought to, create a subcommittee at some point to kind of narrow down the, the opinions and the needs and money in the future. Yeah, first I think we have to figure out what's broken, what's non-existent, um, what is not connected to anything and needs to be connected, that kind of thing, before we could fully figure that out. That would be my guess. So I really appreciate the city manager suggesting that we need to do this audit. Does that give you good direction, Mr. Manager? Yes, and uh, I agree with you. We probably need at the very least to put together some dollars and then start contacting the people who have the worst concrete and give them kind of a carrot and a stick uh, situation where you can fix it now uh, when we'll pay you, you know, 50% or in the next couple of years, you're simply going to be forced to do it 100% your cost um, or other options. But yeah, no, the first yeah. step is an audit, I believe. I think there's also been a um, part of it where they could pay for it over a period of time on their taxes as a way of like breaking up the lump of the money. So it wasn't quite so much. You could do it on like a five year or a seven year time frame um, in payments with your taxes. We'd have to check on that policy to make it easier for people. I'm sure we could figure something out uh, under the special assessment law, but yeah, I'm not opposed to that. Now the city would be lending its credit towards that and that right. would be complicated, so. I'll have to talk to the city attorney about how we would actually do that. But Yeah, I, th there has been a policy in the past, so I'm not sure exactly how that, um, again, we didn't utilize any of that when we did our block, but I, it was part of the conversation. I wonder, um, I, I do see the Plainfield Township has an ordinance um, where essentially a business puts an amount of money up front and then in a situation like Jade Farms where there's no need really for them to put in a sidewalk at this moment, they could put up a certain amount of money up front and then we just never come at them for a sidewalk ever again. And if there needs to be a sidewalk, the city would do it. Um, I wonder if perhaps some businesses whom we have previously deferred uh, would be willing to essentially buy out their sidewalk at today's prices, and then we could use that for the 50-50 split for citizens in the future. So the only problem with that is, generally speaking, these businesses, they're not interested in paying for sidewalks at all. So sure. 
so the idea in giving them a waiver is that they just simply save the 10,000 or whatever dollars now um, and that they never ever have to re really in their minds uh, install the sidewalks. If we were to adopt a similar uh, ordinance to what Plainfield Township has, uh, we'd be saying, well, you can either spend $10,000 on sidewalks or you can give us 10,000 bucks. So there is no cost savings to the business. Um, and the city would put that $10,000 into the sidewalk fund uh, that would help fund sidewalks in other parts of the city. So it basically you'd be eliminating the, I guess, business friendliness aspect of the waiver of the sidewalks and simply require that they either install or give money. Sure, well, and I, I'm not certain that we've given anyone a waiver. We've given several people deferments. Um, and it might be a, an opportunity for them to essentially buy out of that deferment um, at some point in the future. But that's that's not what's on the discussion tonight. It was just a thought. Yeah, but let, let me put it in a different way. Um, uh, Corpse, honey, make sure you take your butt ointment today. Sorry. Give me one second. The power of Zoom. Mm. Well, the, the stupid thing keeps moving on me, so I can't pin that person down either. Oh, looks like they're gone. Uh, OK, um, so if you're a new business and you're investing all sorts of money into buying you know, the, the kitchen equipment or the whatever, the building itself, uh, mm -hmm. saving 10,000 bucks is seen as the you know, this great benefit that the city is giving you to move into that community. Uh, but by eliminating that and require that they either pay for the sidewalks or give money, uh, it's no longer being seen as business friendly. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I guess that wasn't so much of a different way of saying it, but that's kind of, I, I, I would guess how they're going to perceive it. Okay. Um, that's where I think the piece where allowing people to um, atomize it over time can be business friendly. Like you don't have to pay $10,000 now. You have to pay $2,000 now and $2,000 next year and $2,000 the next year until it's paid for. That's kind of a um, splitting the baby. So one thing I wouldn't mind discussion on is whether there's any interest in asking the public for a millage for replacing sidewalks. I know five years ago, the mayor and I were discussing that with people out in the community and there seemed to be some support for that. That was before we passed a rather large bond for a fire station. So I would want to have some town hall discussions about that before we would float that. I would be very hesitant to float that to the public, given the fact that the, the county is assessing for a drain. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That and, also. And we have this fire station and I think- I, I would be willing to have a town hall discussion about it if it was something that people felt strongly about as far as walkability. And I mean, I would, I would, I would vote for it, but I understand that the fire station is already a very heavy lift for a lot of people. And this might not be within their budget at this time, but I would certainly be willing to have a conversation about it as at like a town hall to get oh. people's input. So some, yeah, something I was going to say is uh, it's always a good idea to have a public uh, input on this type of stuff. And at the very least, you could have the public input of where they think the sidewalk most needs to be added or most needs to be fixed. Well, and at the same time, ask them how they'd like to see it paid for. Right. And we could make one of the options a millage. In my opinion, we should. Um get rid of the waivers and the deferrals on the sidewalks and do what other uh, business districts do and the business pays for it and um, end a discussion. And then as those sidewalks develop, the other ones will go along with it. 
because there's going to be a lot of people walking out there with that campground and the hotel and the restaurants on and on and on. And it's time to put a stop to all of this deferments and no sidewalks. It's just well, time, in my opinion. Just, just to clarify, though, I think we're talking about different things when we're talking about sidewalks in the business district versus sidewalks in the residential district. Because Mr. Womack, as part of this, you're talking about throughout the entire town is the residential district, correct? I'm talking about both commercial and residential. Right. Um, but, uh, you know, from the residential perspective, I see it as more important to extend the sidewalks. Um, and of course, we've got a lot of really bad, unfortunately, sidewalks in the downtown R1 district. Um, but, you know, the, the commercial districts are a little bit easier because the businesses tend to have more money than individual single family uh, residentials do. But we also live in a very motor vehicle society. And so one of the things I was going to mention during the discussion about um, uh, sidewalks out at the, what, Sweet Chin Music, is that uh, during the winter, which is when I think of the sidewalks as being most important, um, you can walk in the interior of the parking lot, which is paved and plowed, and it's not so far, far off for, from where the sidewalk would be anyways. And if you're trying to access those businesses, that's kind of where you'd be walking anyways. So it, it's just one of those complicated issues that there's no easy or perfect solution to, but I did want to get the discussion going. Yeah, and, and again, I feel like they're, they're two different problems that require different solutions between the sidewalks for residential neighborhoods and the sidewalks in business districts. And right. when I said, you know, we put sidewalks in and we spent, you know, several thousand dollars. That was for residential. And we talked to all of our neighbors and all of us who are residents signed up to do it because then it became cheaper um, to do our residential sidewalk. And we felt that was very important for us. We have um, little kids and grandkids that ride bikes and we, our, our previous sidewalks were basically rubbleized. And we, um, Amy Hall, will, I'll, I'll call her out. She would joke about having to mow the sidewalk and you should not have to mow your sidewalk. Um, so we made that choice to do that. And there may well be other citizens um, on other blocks who have similar feelings. If we found some ways to help make it accessible for them through mm -hmm. um, a group, through say a 10% carrot, through ch chunking it up for them over five years to be able to do that. That feels very different to me than the conversation about businesses. I, I could be wrong. Do you, what is your feeling on that, Ms. Powell? I just think it's very dangerous out there. I've walked along White Creek and people are zooming. It's just a madhouse. And you're right, you're a foot from a four foot ditch. So, you know, Let's get serious about this pretty soon. We don't have to figure it all out tonight. Any other comments on it? Any other questions? Items for the manager to discuss. Okay, then I think you have some, we, we all agree. I think that we would like you to um, work on getting a assessment structure um, inventory of what our sidewalks are, what they aren't, what's broken, et cetera. Does that, yes? Do you feel yep. comfortable yep. in kind of where the vision of that is? Yep, I appreciate yes, it. Yes, let's Sorry. move forward. All right, then moving on to pickleball courts at Hilltop. Any discussion on pickleball courts, um, interlocal agreement, the pickleball budget, any questions about this? I, I love the idea of a pickleball court. How does this, how does the school feel about this? Have they approved this or is this up in the air? No, so it's kind of up in the air right now. This is an issue I've been working with a number of people on. Oh, it looks like the mayor's back. Hi, hi Mr. Mayor. Um, <laughs> so this is something that Sue Wolf uh, has been spearheading. I've spoken with um, uh, the school superintendent um, the NKCE, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, 
Uh, pickleball is one of those things that a lot of people like, and uh, that tennis court that's up there at the hilltop is defunct, hasn't been used in many years. Yeah. Uh, so it makes it makes a lot of sense, but you know the only issue is um, the school kind of sees it as not a kid uh, type of activity. So while they're willing to allow us to uh, use their property, um, they would prefer that they not have to pay for any of the renovation of that property. So uh, I've been trying to work with Sue Wolf about developing a budget and then developing a methodology for paying for it. So in the initial discussions with her, I told her that I thought I could convince the city council to pay for maybe half of it, maybe up to $20,000. Um, so the budget she put together, uh, I don't have it in front of me, but it's something like $45,000. Um, and of course, that is including a few things that I'm not entirely sure are necessary. Uh, one of the items, I believe, was a $10,000 lighting system. Well, I don't know if we even want people playing up there after dark anyways. Uh, so we could probably eliminate that. So it's down to $35,000. Um, but so I guess my question for the council is, uh, is council in favor of this type of thing? And then if so, are we willing to put money towards the development of it? Uh, and if so, how much? Do we wanna offer to pay for half of the total cost? Uh, do we wanna just give 20,000 and say, you know, anything on top of that is on you to you know, get the more money for? Or does council wanna withhold approving of anything uh, and simply uh, not uh, their assent towards the project and then wait for um, somebody to do, you know, the rest of the money is going to come forward. So that's that's probably what I'd recommend is say, yes, we're in favor of it, if we are. And then say, okay, I'm going to ask each of you what your feelings are on this. I will start with Ms. Atchison. Um, it's, it's awesome to have something, um, somebody interested in improving certain things. I would prefer that we see what the, what she can raise with fundraising before we um, do much toward that because every time we give money extra toward things, then we're gonna lose money for sidewalks or other things that we might wanna work on. I know that we do wanna have certain things for the public, but we gotta kinda figure out what is more important. Okay. And then next would be Ms. Race. I would have to agree with Lisa on that. Um, I'm not quite 100% sure on how, mo how money is pulled from where, um, but I feel that um, there are other more important things at this point. Um, we can put it on the back burner, but I don't feel like it's a necessity at this point, at this time. Okay. Um, Ms. Powell. Uh, I guess pickleball is a great game, probably not something I'd be interested in, but we've had people coming into the red flannel quite often and wanting to have pickleball tournaments and this and that, and that wasn't in our game. But uh, I'd like to see a, a tighter drawing some fundraising going on. And I know they could, if they got it started, they could uh, definitely raise some funds because there's people around here that really want to play pickleball. And like Mike said, they don't need $10,000 lights. They can play till it gets dark. So let's get a little, I'd like to see a better budget on it and go from there. Uh, Ms. Nixon. So my concern is, is not about the money or the uh, Mrs. Wolf could raise the funds because I, I believe she has some experience doing that. My concern is that if the city invests this money in what is a school property, where does the city's jurisdiction end and where does the school's jurisdiction begin? And my concern harkens back to Skinner Field, which was a 99-year a lease to the school and maybe was not maintained in the way that people had envisioned it should be. 
And another group had to come in and take that over because the school decided that it was not financially advantageous for them to continue to maintain that property. And what I would not want to see is the city writes a fat check and then does not have jurisdiction and the school decides at some point they're not going to maintain or that it doesn't benefit them to maintain. If we are going to invest a large amount of money in something for the community, which I don't think is a bad idea, we need to have control over that. We need to own that. I, I don't know if that's possible. Yep. So one of the things that Ms. Wolf and I did discuss was building a brand new pickleball court uh, somewhere on city's property, probably in Morley Park. Um, so that's certainly an option. Uh, the hilltop property just was convenient because it was a, a former tennis court. Uh, but there are some problems and limitations with that location. Uh, so I could speak with Miss Wolf about potentially moving it to Morley Park instead. Um, but there, unless the school was willing to sign us over jurisdiction, I'm not opposed to it being there. But if we're writing a fat check and we're I, asking taxpayers for it, we need to own that. I I tend to, or at least jointly own it. I tend to agree with Miss Nixon. Like that's one of my concerns as well is that um, we, and, and having dealt with Skinnerfield um, and having been on the school board, that if we're putting money into that, we need to make sure that one, it can be maintained um, because, I, and I know the school just doesn't always have the money to maintain those things. And two, that then we continue to have full public access because public schools are public, but not in the same way that, the city is. And I would hate to, for example, the red flannel wanting to be able to hold a tournament there and the school saying, nope, sorry, you have to pay the school money to use it. And that feels complicated to me. We would need to get some clarification on if we're maintaining it, who's allowed to use it, are there fees involved if organizations want to take it over for a period of time? Um, I would want to see all of that clarified. And I would not even be opposed to buying a piece of that um, for a reasonable amount of money. You know, if, if the school wanted to sign it over to us, I'm not, I would entertain that. But there needs to be some kind of contractual language that doesn't have us just writing checks without actually having any control over that piece of dirt. All, all that said, my, my final thought on this is I am not opposed to us writing a check for a pickleball court at some point at some location for up to $20,000, providing we can check all the boxes. That would be my feeling as well. Mayor Hall, do you have some, I saw you shaking your head. Do you have some thoughts? Yes. Um, <clears throat> I think it's problematic to invest money into the school's prep because someday down the road, they could pull the plug and we're out the money. I would say, let them run with it for a while and see how it pans out. And then maybe in the future, we can get a grant or something to build our own pickleball court. I'm not in favor of investing any money in it. Well, so, so there's kind of two things going on here. There is, are we interested in pickleball courts? And then are we interested in pickleball courts at, on school property? So at least the discussion I'm hearing is, yes, we are interested in a pickleball court if we can come up with a better budget and how it's going to be paid for. Uh, but it seems like council's more interested in having this on a city property and not a school property. So if that's the case, um, I'll work with staff about maybe identifying a good location. Uh, we had previously talked about putting a full-size basketball court um, next to the Boy Scout cabin on the south side of the parking lot at Skinner Field. And so maybe that would simply become the uh, location for pickleball courts instead. So if uh, council's not opposed, I will put some more work into this and bring it back to you. Thank you. 
Any other discussion on this? Well, I'd just like to say we spend a lot of money on the kids and what the playgrounds and stuff for the kids and more stuff for the kids. It's not a bad idea to have something for the adults. And even the kids like pickleball too. So mm-hmm. it seems to be special to adults. I have a question. Sure, Ms. Ray. I think more of a statement, I guess. Um, there are the tennis courts there right now. Yes. Are they not usable not really they're not Have usable been- and okay. when we were uh, originally doing this i uh, went up and visited both the hilltop and there's some additional um tennis courts over by is it red hawk elementary red hawk yeah uh, those ones at red hawk aren't quite as bad as the ones at hilltop they're not as bad they certainly are still unusable uh but my understanding is that the ones by red hawk will be converted into parking for the school district so mm-hmm. that's why the school district was not interested in uh, us putting the pickleball there. Uh, so there, like I said, there are some good things and bad things about potentially using the Hilltop tennis court. Um, and there's some good things and bad things about potentially putting in a new court somewhere else. Um, I just feel like it's a lot of money for something that is trendy. Oh, I will tell you that the people who play pickleball do not think it's trendy. <laughs> I actually play pickleball and we put it in at work and a month later we shut down. <laughs> I got pretty good at it too, but I just feel like, you know, it's like tennis, it's cool for a while. And then all of a sudden you have a lot of money, a lot of wasted something. I, I, I just, I'm not saying no to it. I just would really like to see more, um, a little more information on it, I guess. Okay, anything else? All right, then we're gonna move on to discussion item, road resurfacing projects, Church Street, uh, Marie Street and Second Street. And this was all uh, part of the budget discussion when we talked about the road section in the budget. So this is not the first time you are seeing this. So Mr. Manager. Yep. So I just want to put this in front of you guys so you kind of see what we're seeing in the costs or estimated costs for these projects. Of course, this is just engineers estimate of cost. This is not the bid cost. Um, But these are kind of what we're thinking of working on. And that's what we're estimating the costs are going to be. Uh, Mr. LaRose, do you have anything to add to this item? I do, Mike. I got an email from Neil, our engineer today. Um, They're looking at going to bid. Oh, I don't remember the exact date. I think it might be April 25th with hopes of bringing it to the council for approval at the May meeting. And, and Mr. LaRose, uh, what about our bridge project? Do you remember what Mr. Uh, uh, DeWitt has indicated about the bridge project on Main Street? Uh, they're going to delay it because of uh, eagle issues with working in the creek. So I believe they were looking at starting fall of this year, but they're going to delay it probably until spring of next year. Yep, so we've got lots of uh, road projects going on um, and we've got money budgeted for, I, I think it's the parking lot uh, behind the B&B Beauty Supply. So there's gonna be a lot of stuff being worked on here in the summer. Uh, well, do you know if there's any possibility that the transportation infrastructure bill um, coming from the Fed might impact anything like, for example, the bridge? Uh, I doubt it will impact the bridge. Um, okay. The bridge is actually very well funded already. Um, okay. That's a minimal cost of the city, thankfully. Right. Um, but there's just been very little detail so far that I've heard uh, regarding um, the, the new bills that have come out of the federal government. But yeah, we're hopeful that we'll get some more money for some of these additional projects that uh, we have going on that will cost money. Ms. Falcon, do you, have you heard anything? Um, regarding the the new bills that have just come out of the federal government. Ms. Falcon, if you're there. It's it's okay if we don't know. I mean, I know there's nothing, the bills haven't even passed, so. 
So we'll, the future. we'll move, we'll move on to any other, well, I should say any questions on any of those that road funding. I am so glad to see Church Street. That one is really rough. Any other discussion on that? All right, moving on to strategic planning session, the week of July 12th or 19th, weekday evening or Saturday morning. So a strategic planning session was something that uh, we had talked about five years ago when I came on board, never actually ended up happening. Um, so we're getting towards the uh, tail end of five years, and I think it's an appropriate thing in this year of planning um, to sit down with council and a facilitator. And then uh, once we get through this, we've got all sorts of public uh, engagement and uh, recreation updates and master plan updates and all sorts of things. So, um, but the uh, facilitator I chose is Al Vanderberg. Uh, he's the administrator in Ottawa County. Um, and his assistant indicated that he had availabilities the uh, weeks of July 12th or 19th. And I was hoping council might have a day or two that they could give me that would work for everybody. Yes, Mr. Mumax, I think we need to facilitate this rather quickly so we can get moving because we have a whole lot of. So do you have some dates planning, that are a preference, Mr. Mayor? Um, I'm open either day. So whatever works for everybody else. Weekday or Saturday? Weekday evening or a Saturday? I can do either day, whatever the preference of the council. Some people are working, so they may have a problem with the weekday. I'm, okay, I, I'm a teacher. I'm wide open at, at that time in July and August. I will be unavailable the 11th through the 18th of July, we will be on family vacation. Um, so the week of the 19th, I could do any of those week nights or the 24th is a Saturday, but I don't know if that's on the table. I know that Jerry Gross said that he was busy on the 12th and 13th and the 21st. So maybe, maybe, the, maybe instead of trying to figure this out during a meeting, uh, could maybe every council member email me or call me uh, with their dates of availability, and then I could kind of put it into a checkerboard and figure out what date might actually work for everybody? Sure. Okay. Is the Planning Commission also part of this? I don't think so. Um, okay. While I think it has to be a public meeting, um, sure. the intent is that we'd probably hold it outside of City Hall. Um, and, you know, so planning commission members could attend, but this is primarily for the city council and staff. Okay. I thought at one time we had talked about um, having a strategic meeting that included the planning commission. But we could certainly do that as maybe a follow up after we get some visioning kind of stuff in place of where we want to head. If there's planning commissioners available, can they go? Or is there an additional cost or anything like that? I don't think so. Um, like I said, this will be a public meeting, like every meeting that you guys mm -hmm. do. So members of the public are more than welcome to attend. Um, but I'm pretty sure that the facilitator will be kind of guiding and working with the city council, um, not you know city council plus planning commission. Right, at some point it gets unwieldy. Our first step will be with the council, and then there'll be uh, subsequent meetings with the other planning, DDA, and the road. Got it. Sounds wonderful. All right. Any other discussions on that? So please get available dates in that time frame to the city manager so that he can come up with a time that works for the most people. Then moving on to the chamber and community event applications. Item A is the Chamber Family Fun Night, June 16th. And I, we're hearing this so that we can approve it next month because we try to hear things twice. And it also means that then we're talking about it so that people who tune into our very exciting meetings will hear about it and know that it's happening. And then a sidewalk sales art in the heart which would be the heart of Cedar Springs. I, that sounds very exciting to me. June 19th. 
So any discussion about either of those? I know Rose, you sometimes have been involved with the chamber and or the DDA. Just looking forward to all these wonderful events. Can't wait. So any other discussion, Mr. Yep. Manager? So if I could just input a few things. So the family fun night on June 16th, unfortunately kind of uh, conflicts with the city's anticipated first summer concert at the amphitheater. Um, so I did uh, comment that to the chamber, uh, see if we could maybe accommodate them somewhere uh, nearby, but not directly in front of the amphitheater. Otherwise, it's a, obviously a conflict. Um, and then the sidewalk sales art in the heart um, might be some kind of intent to coincide with the uh, heart, I'm sorry, the grand opening for the new fire station. So we had talked previously about potentially doing the grand opening of the fire station either on the 12th or the 19th. And I think Marty, correct me if I'm wrong, but right now we're aiming for the 12th. Uh, so I might work with the chamber to push whatever events that they have now for the 19th to the 12th instead. Um, but that's kind of my understanding of what's going on. But I did want to put it in front of council right now so you guys were at least aware of it. And I will hopefully be able to bring a final product to you guys at the next meeting. Marty, is that correct? Yes, we are working on the 12th. And for the grand opening, we're looking to have like a whole public um, tours and so on. Yes? Yes. Um, it'll be like an open house, ribbon cutting. Uh, we'll have tours of the fire station. Um, we'll have uh, right now, tentatively, a hot dog, a bag of chips, and a bottle of water, something to that effect. We'll have some giveaways for the kids. Um, we'll have a, I, I don't know quite how to term it, for lack of better terminology, a parade type thing from the old station to the new station. Oh, lovely. Uh, it, it'll be minute in comparison to Red Final Days, but uh, it'll, it'll be on that theme. Um, and uh, uh, in addition to that, Ms., uh, Mr. Frazier, we're also going to have some dignitaries give some speeches and stuff, right, at the ceremony for the grand opening? I figured the mayor and the city manager and uh, possibly me. Um, I'm not big on speeches, but I think I could probably come up with something. Yep. So I'm sure that we'll put together kind of a, uh, a I guess, a bullet pointed list of some of the activities that are planned for that day. Uh, but so this chamber sidewalk sales art in the heart might be one of them. And I've also spoken with the CBDT. They wanted to put their own concert on as kind of a grand opening of the amphitheater, which didn't happen last year. Uh, so they might be putting on their own concert at the amphitheater that same day. But still things getting planned. Excellent. Any other discussion on that? I'm so excited to see you help cut the ribbon on that, Marty. You have worked so hard to make this new fire station a reality. Well, I'm, I wasn't alone by no means. Oh, I know. I know you weren't. Yeah. I, everybody on this Zoom put in work to make that happen. But you have been, how long have you been with the fire department, Chief Frazier? <laughs> Well, uh, active, I took a couple of year hiatus, but actively um, 40, 42 years. There we go. So I think you probably, other than maybe the mayor, have the prize for the most amount of time. I don't know, uh, Mr. Mayor, how long were you involved with the fire department? I was there 16 years in the beginning. DPW director for 30. How long were you DPW director? 33 years. So we have a lot of institutional knowledge and folks working yeah. to make things happen for the city and particularly the fire department. So I am just really excited to see you gentlemen when this happens. <laughs> this is just amazing. I'm really excited. So June 12th is our day, yes? That's our tentative day anyway? Yes. Or July 12th. Or Ju 
June. No, I'm sorry. I'm June sorry. I'm looking 12th, at the wrong right? page. Yeah, June. June. Okay. June twelfth. Yes. Yes, ma'am. June twelfth. Um, we're undecided at what time we're going to start until when, but we're thinking somewhere eleven each to maybe three or four, and hopefully we have good weather. Sounds glorious. Okay. Any other discussion? Then moving on to the public library curtilage agreement. So it appears that the library this summer will ha be having a, a couple events a week. So probably just allowing them to use the immediate area surrounding the building uh, would, would be time saving for all of us. Otherwise they'd have to fill out community event applications for 10 different events. I mean, that's a lot, a lot of tree. Yes, and since it's a library activity, there's, I see no reason why they can't use the library property. Well, but so- Would that include the amphitheater too? No, so Ms. Powell, that's part of the issue is that currently mm -hmm. the library organization is able to use the library building and that's it. Everything that's yes. around the library building is actually city property, um, right. which we kind of call the heart of Cedar Springs Park. So what this agreement is saying is that we will allow you to use all the areas around the library building um, without seeking approval from the city, basically given yes. the right to use the city parkland uh, for library purposes. Now, the reason you see all these library events at the amphitheater listed is because we're keeping the amphitheater separate uh, because of course the city uh, and other groups uh, have the ability to rent the amphitheater. And the library also has the ability to quote unquote rent the amphitheater. Of course, they rent it for free, um, but we wanna make sure that they're aware that anytime they wanna use the amphitheater, they do still have to seek permission to do so. But otherwise, otherwise they might be stepping on someone else. Correct. So this agreement though, as you guys, I think there's a map in there, basically shows that the area surrounding the library building they could use without any permission from the city. So they don't make like one special event that covers all that. It's just no special event form whatsoever. Correct. Is that, is that what we're doing? Okay. They basically, we are behaving in agreement saying you have universal right to use this property for library um, purposes at any time. Is that something we should vote on? No. So okay. first of all, the library, it's uh, board has not seen this agreement. Um, and I kind of wrote it in haste uh, this past week. So I'd like to reread it myself to make sure that all the T's are crossed. Um, but soon um and i don't see it as an issue between now and next month so uh, and I, again that's part of the trying to get things in front of us multiple times yep so do you have a yes ms nixon so on item i that the library would like to use the amphitheater for it says foam party which sounds like a ton of fun but it's in our amphitheater with the cement that stains so I'm concerned about foam, but we may address that at a different date. Yep. So I've, I've spoken with uh, Miss Clark about that. The foam is non-staining, non-toxic. And we're not talking specifically about the amphitheater building. We're also talking about the area in front of the amphitheater. Uh, and, and I'm sure that that's the location where this event would occur, not in the building itself. Okay. I have been to a foam party for children and um, it is really cool, but it does uh, in the grass, it gets very wet and uh, trampled on, but they do it every year and it seems to be fine within a, you know, a couple days. It's not anything terrible. Miss Race, when is the foam party for adults? <laughs> I enjoyed that. I happen to ask before. that every year and I get nothing out of it. So I have joined into the party. It is pretty cool. I'll just say so, you know. so bring a kid. Is that like your, your ticket to <laughs> BYOK? <laughs> bring your own kid. 
<laughs> so, <laughs> all right. Any other discussion on that? Then we have the list of um, events for the amphitheater. Any discussions on that for the library? I'm just very excited at this new library and amphitheater and park and how much it is um, giving back to the community in the ability to have these kind of things. Uh, moving on then to communications, uh, the Stark Beer Fest, and I'm sure that's terrible German on my part, community event is approved from for April 17th, which is in like two days. And they so, have excellent music, by the way. It's well worth going down to hear the music, whether you like beer or not. But it's it, Dave really gets some great bands. Wonderful. And then the Run Michigan, any other discussion on that for communications? Uh, Run Michigan Cheap event that was approved. Any discussion on that? Any questions? Mike, that's kind of your event, isn't it? Um, I have run in run Michigan cheap events in other locations throughout Michigan. Um, mm -hmm. I have not run the one here. So I think they've mm -hmm. only done one event previously, and that was two years ago. Uh, obviously, yeah. last year's was uh, canceled for obvious canceled. reasons. Yeah. So um, they, they run a good event, and uh, I'm happy to see them keep coming back. Do they need volunteers from the community for any? No, so one of the reasons that they're able to work, because you know, they, they have a different type of system to most races, is that they have very minimal uh, volunteer and staff requirements. Um, so they, so one of the reasons that the bike race is going to be expensive from a deputy perspective is because they need to be able to shut down intersections and sections of road, whereas these guys will say, when you cross a road, you have to treat that road as though it's you know a road. We're not going to shut it down for you. So, you know, all runners run on roads. They know that just inherently that you have to stop for traffic. Um, and that's kind of how these guys operate. And then they just have very minimal uh, staffing requirements. Um, you know, normally you would have a table with volunteers who hand out water. These guys instead will just have a table with bottles of water on it that's unattended. So they do different things that reduce their overall costs. Um, and, you know, for, for runners, it's fine. Uh, I'm not sure that it, it would be good for uh, Red Flannel Day or anything, but it's a fun event nonetheless. Okay, any other discussion on that or questions? The Kent County Declaration for a Local State of Emergency. Mr. Manager, would you like to talk about this? Yep, briefly. So this was passed just not that long ago. And under the state law, if a local jurisdiction, including a county, declares a local state of emergency, uh, we can extend the no reason uh, virtual meetings, which is why Mr. Hall is able to participate today. Um, and so that goes through the end of June, I believe. And then after June through the end of 2021, uh, council members would still be able to use a medical reason as an excuse for not attending uh, in person. Um, so that's kind of where we're at. End of June, I'm sorry. Yeah, end of June, uh, no reason uh, virtual meetings are still accessible under this order. Okay. Then any other questions on that? Moving on to the drainage district and the drain bonds continuing disclosure. Nothing to add, it is it is what it is. Anybody have any questions about that that we should be passing along to the Drain Commission? Everybody feel like they understand what's happening? Okay, moving on then to the Concerts in the Park event. And this, the they're June, July, and August. Um, the city, I believe, has put a little bit of money towards this. To, am I wrong? Uh, I don't know if we put money towards it. This is done through the NKC. Okay. And, uh, the only thing I'd point out is these occur in Morley Park, not at oh, the theater. 
I'm thinking of the concerts that we're going to be at the amphitheater that the city is with um, the building community building development team, I think. Yep, we're working with a number of different groups to get those concerts put together, but this is a long standing NKC event. This is the one that used uh, from what used to be Parks and Rec. Correct. And they have reconfigured under a different name. And so these will be the concerts in Morley Park. Those are Thursdays, I believe. Can anyone clarify? I don't have a calendar in front of me. Yes, it looks like Thursdays. Thursdays, okay. So Thursday, June 17th, Thursday, July 15th, and Thursday, August 19th. And then public notice from Solon Township Planning Commission regarding CTA Sports Field at 350 Pine. And I believe that meeting is tonight. So hopefully you guys didn't wanna to go to it. Uh, but this is, I believe, a planned soccer field, which will be next to the CTA um, up there on Solon Street, Solon slash Pine Street. And they're basically just telling us it's happening. We aren't paying for any pieces of it or... Correct. This is occurring in the township, so it has nothing to do with us. But I figured since it was immediately next door to us that we should at least know about it. Sure. Excellent. Thank you. Department reports, Mr. Manager. Uh, I apologize for the technical difficulties we had earlier in the meeting. Um, I thought I could run the meeting at the house, my house, but that was not possible. So uh, good meeting and I'm happy to see everybody doing, uh, doing well. Thank you. And the Department of Public Works, Mr. LaRose, anything for us? Nope, I don't have anything to add, thank you. Okay, brush pickup is the first week of May. May 3rd, it starts, everything has to be out by 7 a.m. Okay, which will be before the next meeting, the next city council meeting, so we should make sure we get that out there. I see some people already starting to get their brush out. And then uh, police department. I know I saw Mr. Propes, Sergeant Propes on here earlier. Anything for us, Sergeant Propes? Well, I don't have anything. I'd just like to do a shout out to Shandell, the assistant treasurer. Wish her well in her new job she's gonna be taking. She will be missed at the city. And then the fire department. Anything, Marty? besides the fact that we're getting close to having a beautiful new building ready to put fire trucks in. I have nothing to add to my report. Um, however, I'm willing to uh, accept any questions or comments. Any questions for the fire chief? Then moving on to code enforcement, building inspection, I will kind of lump these together. Any questions on any of these? All right, then council comments. And Mr. Mayor, I will let you go first because you always have to go last. Yeah, thanks you all. Uh, my computer, I thought it would last longer the battery did die. If we're here in sunny Gatlinburg, Tennessee, the weather's been beautiful. We're seeing a lot of sights and it's pretty devastating what the fire happened down through here. You can still see a lot of the burn pattern, but all in all, everything's come back green and growing fast. Thank you everyone for being here and we'll see you when I get home. Thank, Thank you. you for zooming in from Tennessee. Ms. Atchison. Um, I just think that with, with all the businesses expanding and everything happening, I think we have a lot to be thankful for. Um, just getting everything together is gonna be the hard part. Um, I just, Look forward to everything that's going to be happening in all the, in all the events. Hopefully, we can have them um, this summer. That's it. Okay, Ms. Nixon. I'm you know I'm I'm glad to see that uh, the brewery has has been able to hold a community event. I know that they're very community focused, and I I won't be able to attend, but I encourage others to frequent our downtown businesses as they're able. Um, thank everyone for their hard work, and that's all I have. Okay, Ms. Powell. 
I can't wait till we can go someplace without these darn masks on and uh, smile at people and recognize the people that say hi to you. And um, just looking forward to that. So let's get our shots and uh, get back to normal. <laughs> I got one more to go and I'll be good. But thank you everybody for bearing with us. Ms. Race. Um, Rose, real quick. When is what? the next, when is the next blood drive? Tuesday. All day? Yeah, noon to seven or six thirty. Okay. Are you signed up? Well, not yet, but I could well, be. Um, <laughs> you, do you know how? Yeah, you have to go, to go online. To, yeah. Right? Yeah. Pick and what your is time. the app? What is that email or what is that again? Versetti, V E R S I T I, just like university, but it's versity. Yeah. Perfect. And um, build an account and pick out your appointment. Okay. We need Thank blood you. big time. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, I will be excited to see everyone all together again. This is rough to have to be all split up, but um, we always do a good job together separate we're a good team so i'm grateful for that i also want to thank mr walmack for coming in i know he has had a rough day due to a second shot so good for him for getting vaccinated completely um and i hope he feels good enough to um hang in there for the next one or the next week that's it All right. I think it's me then. And yes, I'm so excited for people to get their shots. Um, the clinic downtown, uh, if you, I, I should have a phone number up, but I, I don't, but it's on Wood TV 8 and it's, um, I think, Mr. Womack, do we have a connection on our website for the vaccine clinic? He said yes. Okay. Um, so you can check our city website. The state is getting them 10,000 more shots this week and in addition extra and 10,000 extra next week. They have, ha I have a former student who works on it quite regularly. They have open appointments. You can call and they can get you in the next day and you can get it done. I've got both of mine and I am past even the time frame for being fully vaccinated it's totally worth it so that we can all be together and eat hot dogs at the fire station grand opening and be at the concerts and just go back to the library and check out books and without having to wear masks and social distance and keep our numbers down and just it's hitting kids right now um and it's scary so get vaccinated and help protect our kids as well as yourself and help us get our community back to what it was before this crazy, ugly virus. So with that, we're adjourned. Good night. Bravo. Thanks, Pam. Thank you. Have a good night. Mayor Hall, we are so happy to see your face. Uh, yeah. Um, I talked to Joe Dern again, and he said that he would run for the planning commission, but he was not interested in the council. So if we have some other candidates, let's go for them. Um, Shandell Naprolinski has pulled a petition. I have it, and I am helping her get signatures. Okay. Good deal. Good so night. Since, she, since she's leaving the employment of the city, she is eligible to be on the council? Yes, no problem. So I have five signatures for her right now. And then I also have a petition for Lisa. I'm helping her get some signatures. Okay. So I'm not, you won't be home before they're due, but. No, I won't. So good luck. <laughs> Thanks.
<laughs> awesome. And we'll see you when you get back. Sure enough, we'll be home late Sunday night. Okay. Hopefully. We'll we'll keep our eyes on stuff around here. All righty. Good night, all. Good night. <laughs>